Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a Will I Buy It? Where I'm chatting with you guys about the upcoming and new makeup releases, how excited I am or not for them, what I plan to pick up and what I am passing on all together. So without further ado, let's get started. So kicking us off first, this new fragrance from Killian. This is Love Amber and Oud Special Blend 2023. A flanker of the Love fragrance, one of Killian's probably their most popular fragrance. Love, they do a flanker, a special edition every year of that fragrance. It's always, it always kind of leans towards Love. Typically there's always a marshmallow note in there, but they are always very different from the original Love. So I picked up last year's Special Blend and I appreciated it, but it's not one I wear a lot because it is incredibly oody. It is so oody that you smell like a barnyard for the majority of the scent's journey. For me, it's like a layering fragrance. Like I like it, it gives me a big kick of realistic, very high quality oud. So I like to layer it with other more forgiving wearable fragrances for myself. So when I saw this one, last year's was rose and oud and it was very, very heavy oud. Oud, oud, oud throughout the whole journey of the scent. This one, Amber and Oud, it sounds a little more wearable to me. It has, of course, the orange blossom and marshmallow notes in the top, as well as then followed by some rose, but the Oud is in the base. So that immediately says to me, this is gonna be more wearable. It's not gonna be as like, oh, Oud right in the face, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like this will be a little softer. It's got some amber and resiny notes in the middle. This sounds, and also amber in the base. So this sounds like it's gonna be right up my street. It's still gonna be woodsier and sort of spicier and more kind of unisex than original love, which is a little too sweet for me. So yeah, I'm 100% picking this up. I was kind of waiting for a couple of reviews to come through just to tell me whether this was going to be like redundant given that I have original love and I have a couple of love flankers. Is this gonna be redundant to me? But by the looks of it, the reviews are just starting to come through and I think this is going to be a new addition to my collection because it sounds right up my street in lots of ways. You can always count on Killian's performance. There's gonna have great longevity and great sillage and a lot of these notes are speaking to my soul. So this is a yes for me. Next up, there are some new lipsticks from Pat McGrath. These are her Satin Allure lipsticks and she's done a huge restock and also line extension, new shades in this, what I find to be hideous, packaging. It kind of, I mean, no, I was going to say it looks okay, but it doesn't. It looks to me, it looks oh, tacky. I don't want to say that word because it seems really harsh and brutal. And that's not a word I would ever normally associate with Pat McGrath, especially their packaging. But these lipsticks, they really are. That bow on the front, it's so huge and it's not, you know, they feel so light and cheap and they aren't. And Pat McGrath as a brand is not cheap. And I don't, I hate it, okay? I hate it. I heard someone said to me when I first got these lipsticks, like the original ones that launched in this packaging with the Bridgerton collection, that the bows were supposed to come off and be like rings, but mine don't come off. I would love them to come off, let me tell me. I wouldn't be wearing them as rings, but I would love them to come off. They won't even like fit in a lipstick like slot in my drawer in my lipstick storage, they won't fit in there because that stupid, large, oversized, ridiculous bow on the front. I've slightly digressed, I understand. But I am excited for these. I'm excited because the formula itself, I love, I love Pat's satin formula. They've been a favorite of mine for a long time, but I wish we'd kept the black packaging. That was so much more Pat McGrath. It was so much more chic and it just felt more luxurious. And yeah, the, I mean, the formula of the lipsticks, I love. They are very pigmented. They have a wonderful satin finish, very creamy, very nicely wearing, very flattering on the lips, beautiful colors, but I wish we'd kept that packaging. However, I have ordered a few of the new shades and I will do a video and some swatches for you and some comparisons to the existing shades. The shades that I picked were Skin Sane 2, which is a warm rose nude, uh, Patalica, of course, you knew I was gonna pick Patalica, bright coral pink. <laughs> 
hello. And then Untamed Desire, which is described as a neutral brown nude, which I'm not sure it's my, it might be too dark for what I'm going for. The lip swatches on Pat McGrath's website are utterly insane. They are never anything close to what they actually look like. So who knows what we're going to get here, but I will share these with you when they arrive and we can see what they actually look like. <laughs> Always a nice surprise. Next up, let's talk about this Pearlescence Ramadan collection from MAC Cosmetics. Now the vast majority of this is like an easy pass. The eyeshadow palette isn't really my cup of tea. I have so many MAC lipsticks and these are definitely like shades that I have, but that face palette oh let me just say one of my like most tr most treasured items from mac is their holiday collection from like five years ago could be further could be more longer ago is like a face palette all in the extra dimension finish a bronzer a blush and a highlight oh my goodness uh, the blush in that is one of my favorite blushes ever and it was like you know just a limited edition long gone now and it is just I love it the cheek palette MAC has always been always been great at cheek products and that looks perfect if that turns out to be a bronzer blush and a highlighter I 100% want that because they are so good and I love their extra dimension formulas as well they're all so smooth and soft and beautiful like satin finishes that looks right up my street, but the rest of it is an easy pass. Next, let's talk about these two new Urban Decay Naked Mini Eyeshadow Palettes, the Smiley Palettes. I don't know if this is just me, but I, whenever I see these smiley faces, all I can think of is the smiley faced killer. That's instantly what came to my mind when I saw these. I don't know that that's a really appealing thing to put on makeup packaging. These are an, an absolute pass with a very wide berth for me i i mean these color stories are not anything that i wish to use the packaging is extremely garish dare i say it's very vibrant and colorful i'll give it that but it's just not me again it feels childish it feels like something my daughter would like to play with i don't like it it very much reminds me of a serial killer there I said it. Next up, Rare Beauty have released a whole load of stuff, but the one thing that I am interested in is the two new shades of their Soft Pinch Liquid Blush, Worth and Virtue. <gasps> Worth is described as a true rose and Virtue a beige peach, and they are both in the dewy finish that we love. You can keep the matte ones, we don't want those. Give us all of the dewy ones. Now, I, you know me, afraid of a liquid blush but the rare beauty one i've had really good experiences with so far the one complaint i have is they don't have any more colors that i wish to try like i i tried a couple of them and i liked them but then i went back and i was like i want more but there are no more shades there were no more shades that i like both of these are perfect they are so beautiful especially virtue that is like my shade of blush give me all of those peachy neutral blush shades yes give it now these haven't launched here yet they were like an early release on the us sephora app so far having sephora in the uk has yet to pay off in any way shape or form we're still not getting all of the brands we're still not getting the us earlier release dates so yeah i mean if they come here and they come here quick I will be getting both of these because I think they look beautiful and I know the formula is good. Oh, suits you, sir. Suits you, Selena. Next up, let's talk about these Galan Terracotta Luminizers, as you may know if you have been here before. I already have one of these. I have the warm gold shade, the deeper shade of the two. These are now available. I think they were on a Sephora, a European Sephora site. So they have launched, are starting to launch, are starting to trickle out. So I feel like they'll be here any moment, maybe even before this video goes up. So keep your eyeballs peeled. That's what I'm saying. So I already have the warm gold and it has very rapidly become a firm favorite, a top drawer a regular in my makeup rotation. I absolutely love this highlighter. Very smooth, very glowy, very luminous, but the shade is not my 
absolute preference. I don't love a gold highlighter. I would much rather something a bit more neutral or something like warm and peachy, even like a, a pinky toned highlighter, I don't mind. So I definitely want to try the other shade, the lighter shade, which looks like to be more of a rosy finish and slightly lighter. So I am going to pick up that second shade because so far I'm loving that highlighter and I would like another one, please. So yes, that's a yes from me. Next up, something I won't mind sharing with you, I'm a little puzzled by. I'm puzzled, I'm intrigued. I'm also a little skeptical. I'm a little skeptical, I, I'm a, I'm a non-believer as it stands, just reading this information. So these are Too Faced, got a lot of Too Faced today. What's going on at Too Faced? They're just throwing all of the stuff out today. These are the Lip Injection Extreme Lip Shaper Plumping Lip Liner. Have you ever heard of a, such a thing? Because I have not. I've only ever heard of plumping like glosses or plumping lipsticks. I mean, even that, it's typically gloss, isn't it? That claims to be plumping. This is the first time I have ever heard of a plumping lip liner. And there are, I mean, I'm looking at the before and afters and I'm thinking, I know these are supposed to be like really dramatic before and afters. One, I feel like every brand when they launch plumping lip products uses models with either really full lips or who have a lot of lip filler. And these are some beautiful full lips before, regardless of what's going on after. And I don't know that I see any difference. They literally look the exact same size. They've just been slightly overdrawn. So that's not filling me with confidence that these are actually going to work. Second of all, I just don't know how it will work. Are they gonna be like the Bernie Hurty type? But how? It's a pencil. I'm so intrigued and confused. They also claim that to be visibly plumping for up to eight hours. And I just, again, I don't know how it's humanly possible in 2023 for a lip pencil to plump your lips and keep them plump for eight hours. I don't know how this is going to work. I'm highly skeptical and cynical. I've been burned before, okay? Literally. So yeah, I don't know that I want to pick these up, but I do want to watch reviews and see if it actually works because I don't think it's going to, but I'll more than happily take it all back if it does in fact work and be suitably embarrassed, but <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna have to be. Next up, a new release from MAC, and this is their Studio Fix Everywhere All Over Face Pen. There's a lot of confusion in today's video, a lot of strange little inventions going on. And I'm not sure that they all should have left the boardroom. I don't really fully understand this product. This is described as an all over face pen, concealer and foundation hybrid that offers 36 hours coverage. These like claims are just getting longer and longer, aren't they? Who's gonna be the first brand that claims their foundation wears for a week? Who's, who's it gonna be? Conceals, brightens, and even skin tone. It's lightweight, flexible, won't crease or cake. Medium to full buildable coverage, natural finish while being waterproof. There's a whole lot of claims in there. The one that sort of stood out to me as being slightly intriguing is that I noticed this claims to be like perfect for touch-ups because it's like a portable, carryable little pen, but it also claims to like wear for 36 hours. So tell me, why would we need to use it for touch-ups if it's going to wear perfectly for 36 hours? I mean, what kind of two-day bender do you think we've gone on? So that seems to be a little, you know, muddled of a uh, message there. I am not fully sure what this is or what's happening. It doesn't seem to be like quite a concealer, but it doesn't seem to be like a foundation either. I feel like this is a strange little like pen of a dispenser that I don't really want to like wipe on my under eye area. That feels like it would be painful. But do I want to be like, how does this even get out? Does it pump? Is it bun? I don't know. I don't under, there's a lot of questions that I have about this product. Many of them I haven't answered yet. I definitely, I'm not going to be buying this because I don't even really know what it is. But I definitely am, in, but I am certainly interested again in reviews. This is a wait for review. Wait for a review, find out what it is first and what it does, and then we can talk.
but at this moment I'm passing because I just, I want to know what I'm buying and I don't know what's happening. It's a little confused, you know, just give us a concealer or give us a foundation. I feel like MAC need a really great foundation. I don't feel like they've ever had a great foundation. They have a great shade range typically, but they haven't had a real hit foundation for a very long time. And I feel like they should have just given us that and maybe kept this for like April Fool's Day. Next, we've got a new collection from NARS coming and it isn't an orgasm collection. <sighs> I can't believe it. It's actually a Laguna collection. So, you know, it's nice that Laguna got a turn, uh, uh, finally. So we have a couple of mini little eyeshadow quads and one of their Afterglow lip balm. I think both of these little quads look pretty. They look nice. I really like Nars's eyeshadow formula, but they definitely don't look like anything I need or don't have in my collection. I do really like the look of the Afterglow lip balm shade though. That looks like perfect for summer, bit of a bronzy balm. I like that formula as well. So I would pick that up, but the eyeshadow I just think they're like, I wanted more, give me a bit more. They're a little lacking, a little lackluster. Not that exciting to me anyway. What do you think? I'm definitely saving my money there. Next up, we have another new fragrance, this time from Kayali. So that is Huda Beauty's sister brand of fragrance, a really popular brand actually. I purchased their last um, fragrance release, which I do really like, but the performance was lacking for me. So that was a little disappointing. I do think I will like it more in summer, which is what I said in my review, because, you know, fragrance just has a bit of help from the warm weather in summer. So it may perform a bit better and I may get more from it that I'm missing currently in the cooler months. So I have had a decent experience with this fragrance house. This <laughs> alarms me, okay. The list of notes in here that are like sickeningly sweet gourmand notes is a, an alarming length, okay. We've got sweet rum, we've got hazelnut, we've got pistachio gelato, we've got cardamom, we've got raspberry, white peach, pear, then the base, the base notes, whipped cream, marshmallows, cotton candy, Turkish delight, cocoa, cedarwood, sandalwood, and tonka. Oh my, I've never seen so many sweet notes in one fragrance. I've never seen it. And all of those in the base, I feel like this is gonna be so sweet and sickly and headache inducing. It's just gonna be too sweet for me. I don't know how it could not be. I don't know how this could not be just way too sweet. So it's interesting. I feel like this would have been a better, maybe autumn winter fragrance because in summer, I just think this is gonna be unbearable. But I am gonna keep or try and keep an open mind that maybe they've made this work and this combination isn't going to be as like sickly and over the top and just cloying to death as it sounds. That's what I'm gonna hope, but I'm definitely not gonna blind by this because it just sounds far too sweet for me. And like I'm going to smell as though I've worked in like a cake factory all day and I fell in one of the vats that was making like a rocky road mixture. I fell in it and I'm covered in it head to toe and I've just come home for a shower and that's what I'm gonna smell like. And I don't know that, that's actually not sounding too bad now but I don't know that I want to smell like that. It's just, it's too much, I feel. But if you smelt it, please let us know in the comment section, am I wrong or is this like the biggest headache you've ever smelled? Next up, another, another launch from Too Faced. This time we have a new, Mm, not really foundation, a new skin tint. This is their Born This Way Healthy Glow Moisturizing Skin Tint with SPF 30. This bottle is screaming MAC face and body. It's screaming Dior backstage. And I'm not mad about it. I don't mind that. I like those, those bottles. They're very easy to travel with. They are very easy to store. They are very easy to get every last drop out of. This claims to be vegan friendly and formulated with 75% of skin caring ingredients with a blend of natural fruit extracts and hyaluronic acid, but it also contains coconut water, which is going to be a problem for a lot of people. But it is oil-free and claims to be a nourishing serum foundation with up to 24 hours of wear and hydration for healthy, glowing skin. There's some 
some good buzzwords in there. It says it's buildable coverage, it says it's weightless, it says it gives you a soft focus ethereal glow. There's a lot that sounds great about this. It does seem expensive for Too Faced, $42 apparently. That sounds like, like quite a lot for Too Faced, who I feel like their price point is generally like quite a lot lower than that. I feel like at that price point, I'd rather buy the Dior Backstage Foundation, which I think is going to be better. What do you think? I do think it's good that these type of foundations have SPF in it because they are typically the type of foundation or skin tint that you might just whack on by itself just to even out some skin tone and then you could reapply. But again, you know, you're not gonna apply enough to get a full SPF 30 out of it. But I'm a more is more kind of girl when it comes to SPF, the more the better, you know, make it a party. So yeah, I'm kind of on the fence on this one. Like there's a lot that sounds good about it, but a lot that sort of makes me go, mm. and then the biggest bit of that is the fact that it's Too Faced. And I feel like I've just not had any wins from that brand. In a, in a very long time. So I think that's gonna be a no and maybe we'll circle back. And finally, Nabla Cosmetics are, it looks like at this moment, going to be dropping a lip oil, I'm thinking. So these are coming in 10 shades and oh, I mean, all of these adverts had me salivating on Instagram. These videos are so clever. The gummy bear, stop it. Stop it right now. But these look like juicy, fruity loveliness. And I'm excited to see these. A lot of these colors are like speaking to my soul, especially for spring and summer when I love these type of juicy, sheerer, but really kind and caring lip formulas. They look juicy and good and yeah, I'm here for these, I can't wait to see them. I imagine by the time this video goes up, we'll have had the full reveal. So yes, am I right? Was it a lip oil? I hope so, or well, this is gonna be really embarrassing. And there you have it. Those are all of the new and upcoming makeup releases that I've been eyeing up that have caught my little eyeball in the last few days. Please let me know what you're excited for, if anything. Are you just not excited for any of it? I mean, not a lot of it was hugely exciting for me either, if I'm being honest. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.